Hey guys, fishing and stuff. Today, I got seven more fishing hats for you that I think you're gonna find useful. So, stick around. Today, we got seven awesome fishing hats that I think you're gonna find useful. Anyway, let's get into these fishing hats. Fishing hack number one. On another video I did, I had a part in it where I talked about craft beads. Because you know the little beads that you buy for fishing? The little red beads that come in like 20 to a pack. But you can buy like 500 craft beads for $3. I don't know if that price is the same, but I bought these a long time ago. I also talked about how you can buy little packs of craft beads that's a whole lot cheaper than the fishing beads that you buy in the fishing section. Well, when I made that video, one of my subscribers said he used silicone beads. These right here are some silicone beads. And I thought to myself, that is a great idea. These silicone beads come in every different color you can think of, but the best part is that they're soft. I mean, you could mash these things and they got a little give to them. Now the reason soft matters so much is because the job of this bead is to protect this knot from this sinker. The sinker smashes down on the knot and having a soft bead on it, it's gonna put more cushion in between the knot and the sinker and stop you from destroying your knot. Because when you destroy a knot, you won't know it till you get a big fish on and lose it. <laughs> Oh, oh, come on. <laughs> Shit. Fishing hack number two. Now, something else you can use to protect your knot from your sinker is a bobber stop. Bobber stops are really awesome. And you just slide these things on your line, and they're made to adjust how far your bait goes down when you're fishing with a bobber. But you can use them to protect your knot as well. It'll stop the trauma of the sinker sliding into your knot. Keep it safe so it don't break when you catch a big fish. <laughs> Did it again. You can buy bobber stops in variety packs like this, which are actually a bunch of different sizes. They come in small, medium, large, and extra large. You can buy variety packs and multiple colors, and you can also get them in just plain black if you want to. And there's one more thing to mention. Bobber stops are gonna be a lot cheaper than the silicone beads, but I gotta say, I do like the silicone beads too. But I've used bobber stops for a while. Most people use a three-way swivel like this when they're anchor fishing, and they just clip the sinker right on or they use like an egg sinker that'll slide up and down the line. Or you can use a sinker slide that slides up and down your line as well. Well, the thing is, I like to troll. So I've always got a CNT rig tied on to my line. And I like sinker slides, they're a lot more versatile and I can change out my weight, which basically means I can use dragon weight or I can switch back to regular weights. You know what I'm saying? Well, the thing is, if you're not trolling and you start anchor fishing, this sinker slide can slide up and down your line. And basically what happens is this float that holds your bait up will pull line through the sinker slide until your bait's up on top of the water. And that's never a good thing. But if we put a bobber stop on this line, kind of close to the swivel, now you can adjust a bobber stop anywhere you want it. And if you decide to anchor fish, you can pull it down. Now when your float pulls through it, it's gonna hit that bobber stop and it ain't gonna go no farther. You see what I mean there? That way your sinker slide don't let all your line go to the top of the water and your bait end up on top of the water like I said. And one more thing I need to mention, you see this float? It's a big float. It's actually a pretty awesome float too, but it's a little overkill for most normal baits. I made a video about floats that's really interesting. You might ought to go check it out if you use floats because if you use a float like this, you see this sinker right here? It ain't heavy enough for that float. You're gonna need at least three ounces just to hold this float itself down. Can you believe that? It's still up at 11, so that's two and three quarter ounces. And that's kind of interesting. Fishing hack number three. This next hack goes along with the first two hacks because the silicone beads, well, they're just awesome, right? And these little bobber stops right here, there's just all kinds of stuff you can do with them. Plus, they're cheap. But this next hack, you ain't gonna find one cheaper than it. All you gotta do is get you some little bitty hose, preferably silicone or rubber, something soft. You could use vacuum line for a carburetor 
or whatever as long as it's little and this hose right here you'll probably get at least a hundred pieces cut up all you gotta do is cut it up in the quarter inch or less i mean look at that it slides right over your knot and it don't get no cheaper than that people it don't get no cheaper than that fishing hack number four now I'm pretty sure everybody knows what this right here is. This right here is a sinker slide. And we use sinker slides so we can change out our sinkers easily. I mean, we can go from a dragon weight to a cannonball weight without cutting our line and starting over. It just makes things easier. One time we even took some cable holders from the electrical department and we made our own sinker slides. It was on one of the hack videos I'd done before. But today we're not focusing on this sinker slide. Today we're focusing on this weight holder on the bottom. And I mean, you gotta love these things. They're really easy to open. They don't hurt your hands. And it makes it where you can switch out your weights a lot easier. These things are just awesome. And you can buy these too. And you can buy them in different sizes. You can get smaller ones like this or you can get bigger ones like I got. I think I got 50 of these for like $7 plus tax, something like that. Wasn't ridiculous high, wasn't too bad, but I mean, why would it be? They from China like everything else. But there's a solution if you wanna do this right here cheaper. And the way to do this cheaper is with paper clips. Paper clips are easy to put on too. I got some tiny, cute little paper clips right here. These must be my wife's. But you can do the same thing with a paper clip. And it works pretty much the same way. I mean, you can drag your baits around with it. It'll swivel around. It's pretty much the same thing as this. You can get different size paper clips. You can get coated paper clips. And I know somebody's going to be in the comment section going, it'll pull right off of there. Actually, I've pulled and pulled and it don't pull right off of there but it may be a little weaker than this one which is okay because if you think about it what's going to get hung if you're dragging it ain't going to be the hook because the hook's going to have a float holding it up it's going to be the sinker that gets hung which by the way i got a video on making these sinkers too and they don't get hung but if anything's going to get hung it's going to be this sinker so if this pulls off easier than this one you can pull it off you save your hook, save your leader, you save your swivel, you save your float. All you gotta do is put a new paper clip on a new weight and away you go fishing. So instead of spending all the money on these, try out some paper clips. I mean, it works. Number five. So on this next hack, I got my anchor laying here. This is my never lost anchor. And I did a little segment on it a couple of videos ago because I built an anchor that you don't have to weld. Well, anyway, I talked about how affordable this anchor is because it really is more affordable than most anchors. But this hack ain't about this anchor. It's about the chain on this anchor. We put chains on our anchors because we tie strap it at the top of the anchor. This is the top, it's just upside down. Then we connect it at the bottom of the anchor. That way if we get hung up, we can break this tie strap we can pull this anchor loose from the bottom and a lot of people was asking me why i had a loop at the bottom of my anchor and i figured i'd explain that and actually i'm gonna give you a demonstration of how it works okay so i got my anchor hung on my weld table and stuck on there real good i'm gonna pull on the anchor rope until it breaks and i'm gonna show you how this part breaking gets this part loose Okay, so like I said, I'm going to try to break this and show you how this works. Let's see that again. Let's see it again in slow motion. Let's see it in reverse. Now, let's see a bunny. Let's see it again with the bunny. Let's go Brandon. Anyway, like I said, if you break this part loose, it's gonna pull your anchor loose from the bottom and it'll make it come out of anything. Okay, all you haters, calm down. That was not the hack. That was just a little helpful hint. The hack's about the chain. Now you got an anchor rope tied to this thing, but you got this extra chain. And when you're pulling your anchor, if it comes up too fast, you can scratch your boat with this chain. You know what I mean? Like, scratch your boat with it. 
I'm serious. Well, you can fix that with some $3 bicycle tubes. The reason I bought two of them is because there's basically two different bicycle tubes. This skinny little tube right here goes on a 10 speed. These fatter tubes go on dirt bikes, mountain bikes, whatever. And according to the size chain you have and how tight you want it to fit, you can use either one of these tubes. You know what I'm saying? Well, the first thing we need to do is cut our tube. Now to make it easier to pull this chain through a bicycle tube instead of having to stand there and fight with it, I just tie a rope to it. Then we're gonna feed our rope through our tube and then just pull her through if that makes sense. This tube's a little bit loose. I'm probably gonna have to force that other tube through here. The mountain bike tube was a little bit too loose. So I'm doing the 10 speed tube and it's a little bit too tight. So I'm gonna hit it with some WD-40 and hope it slides through there easier. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, the smaller tube definitely looks better on this anchor. And I think this thing's gonna be awesome because it's still flexible. You're gonna protect your boat when you pull your anchor up. But this thing wasn't easy getting on there. And I found the best method to put it on there. I used this WD-40 gel lube. It's a lot thicker than regular WD-40. And it's got this little spout and you can stick it down in there and you can spray it inside and it helps you pull it over it. Also, this WD-40 gets everywhere so everything's slick. Take your old rag and wrap it around it to help you pull it up on it. And after I figured that trick out, it wasn't that hard. I think I'm gonna like this right here and it's probably gonna save me from scratching my boat more in the future. Fishing hack. Number six. This right here is a hack that I had on a hack video before in the past, where basically I took a rod that the handle has seen some wear. This handle ain't too bad, but this handle looks a lot better. So in other words, I took this and I turned it into this. And that's kind of cool. And it was really simple to do. I took this heat shrinking handle material that you can buy on Amazon. You just cut the fit your rod, you slide it on, you heat it up. And when you're done, well, you can see the difference. Pretty cool. Well, I found this new stuff and it's called sniper skin. And you can get it in all sorts of patterns. And it does look really good. Well, this is kind of an update to an old video, but I just wanted to see what this stuff looked like in person. And they had some cool fishing rod handle covers. I can't remember how many they have. It's like 10 or 12 different patterns, but they're really cool. This stuff's just a little bit different than heat shrink. It kind of reminds you of cardboard. It's a little bit harder, but we're fixing to shrink this stuff and we gonna see what it looks like. I trimmed it to fit. It says leave a, at least a quarter inch overhang. And what I had left, I just stuck on here cause I wanna see what it does. These are some old rods I don't use much anymore, but it looks pretty cool so far. I wanna see what this stuff's like after it's installed. And just for your information, it comes with some pretty good instructions and there's actually two ways you can do it. I'm using the heat gun method. You know, actually, that didn't turn out too bad. That looks pretty good. And it's got a kind of rough texture, so it's gonna be a little grippy when you hold it. And of course, it's got the foam underneath, so it's soft too. The little leftover piece I threw on there, I mean, you can put it on there or not, that's up to you. But I gotta admit, this stuff is not cheap. It's really not cheap at all. But rods ain't cheap either. If you got some rods you can save, I mean, it's worth it not to pay $100 for a new rod. But I also got some camo. We're going to check it out, too. You know what? This stuff's so grippy and tacky and cool. Kind of gives me another idea. Now, my catfish net, it has a handle. It has a handle that's made onto it. But my crappy net don't. But now it does. That right there is awesome and I don't care what you say. Honestly, what got me thinking to do this, I really did buy this for my rod handle. But what made me start thinking about this is this stuff was designed for golf club handles. Well, a net pole is kind of like a golf club handle. And this little net right here is what I like to use for crappy fishing. And I think 
It's gonna be awesome. Honestly, I done done put this on my net handle already if I'd have thought about that a little bit sooner. Fishing hack number seven. These right here are release clips. Some of you may know what release clips are for and some of you may not. I've got like three videos about planer boards. And if you watched the planer board videos, you saw me build them and you have to have release clips to put them on your line. But there's other things you can do with the release clips. When you're trolling for striper and you got your lines out, you have to let a lot of line out so that the bait will go deep enough to where the striper are. Well, some people use downriggers. Some people even use leg core fishing line to get their bait down deeper. Because when your boat's moving, it wants to come back up to the surface. Striper, high birds, and some other fish are really line shy. So you have to be careful what you put on your line because they'll see it and you'll never catch nothing. But you can take one of these release clips. If you put a split ring on it and just put a sinker on it, you can let out like 15 or 20 foot of line, take this thing and clip it on your line, and it'll help pull your baits down farther. And it's a lot simpler to use than a really super long leader. And actually this right here is a really good idea. And I got this idea from another channel called Running Lake Fishing. He's a friend of mine and he was telling me about this and he was okay with me sharing it. So get you some release clips and you can use them when you're trolling to get your bait deeper. And guess what you can use if you don't want to use a split ring? That's right, you can use a paper clip. See how useful that is? Well, there you have it. Seven awesome fishing hacks. Hey guys, if you ain't checked out my channel page, go over and check it out. I got a long list of DIYs that'll help save you some money. If you see something you like, click subscribe and click the bell so YouTube will notify you when I post videos and you can watch them. By the way, I got like 20 other hack videos you can watch if you like. I'm just saying. And as always, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you on the next build.